my week has been centered around uh, I, I got a new job recently and uh, I, it's been a while since I've actually had an hourly job a lot of the, 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 blah, speaking a lot of the work I've been doing um, for the past like half year or so has been you know one-off work you know part-time stuff nothing that was hourly nothing that was regular so it's been a while since I've had a regular job and uh, I kind of forgot how awesome and terrible it can be and it just kind of it kind of, I, I kind of ignited almost, uh, you know that feeling you get when you first you get your first job and you're like, this is what working is like. So I just wanted to, uh, to talk about all of our first jobs, the, our experiences with work in general. Um, I, I don't know. I just, mm -hmm. had, I just thought it'd be interesting because, uh, some people have some really interesting first jobs and some very terrifying and hilarious stories about what happens when you first start working. So yeah, sounds like somebody's typing. And, uh, yeah, so co-hosts. So my first job, um, I don't remember what that is, uh, outside of working for my mom for like years, but I think my first job where I had a different boss other than someone that was related to me was the, pretty much the janitor kind of job I had at Marquette before I started going there. Basically what I did was I was brought in with a bunch of other students who went to Marquette to help clean up the dorms um, for the new school year. And it was an experience, to say the least. An experience? Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's all kinds of things. I mean, it's good things, great things, and a lot of kind of bad things, unfortunately. Uh, what I mean by that is that I mean, there was great parts to it. Like, you would, a lot of the guys I worked with were a lot of fun to talk to. I came actually oddly close with a few janitors and custodians that throughout the year, if I ever saw them, I would actually run up to them saying, hey, how you doing, Terry? You know, <laughs> it's good to see you and give them hugs and everything. Because they were they were great guys. Terry, I still think, who is this fantastic man that I wish him all the best. Um, kind of a, a decent singer at that. But uh, yeah, I actually had a lot of, you know, interesting conversations with with him, like very philosophical, which you never really expect when it comes to uh, talking to people that you know are helping you clean up carpets. But you know what? That just shows you that just all there's people who come in all shapes and sizes. And then there are the bad parts, like trying to clean up dorms. And I wasn't there, but I've heard stories how one group had to help clean up this RA's old dorm room mm -hmm. and found piles of condoms underneath her bed. <gasps> oh. You summer. not used? Some are open. I don't remember if they're used, but I usually say yes. They were some used. Oh. And I, I found all kinds of weird stuff like that. I once found a, 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 a private parking sign to a church that was next door to the dorm room. Wait, wait. Um, yeah, yeah um, one of the dorms we cleaned up was right next to this big red church. And... I was cleaning up a, a room, and I looked in the closet, and I found, like, near the top, a parking sign. Like, you know, private parking, you know. Trespassers aren't allowed, stuff like that. And the thing is about the sign is that it's not it's like one of those signs that are, you know, bolted to a pole. No, this thing is bolted to a brick wall. Just makes me wonder, how the heck yeah, did they get the thing they, off there? How on earth did they get that off? I don't know. I mean... And it gets crazier. Like, I once found, because people always forget to look through their stuff, and they leave all kinds of things behind. I mean, I found, man, I found love letters, poorly written papers, uh, mixed CDs, uh, DVDs, clothes, shirts. I, I still own a tie from my experiences there. I found credit cards, credit card bills. I even found a tax return once. Somebody forgot their credit card? <laughs> Yes, someone forgot their tax return. We're talking like the full filled out sheet. I had pretty much everything, their back history on form. I knew their name, social, <laughs> yeah, like everything. It was insane. Wow. And Why would someone yeah. leave that stuff? College kids. I mean, I begin the aliens gesture. For those who can't see, I'm just going, you know, college <laughs> kids. Uh, yes. Uh, college kids, I guess. Yeah, I don't think of too much time, but that's pretty much a brief run through of my experiences. I'll, I'll answer questions later if you want to hear more. But uh, that sounds else can get. pretty awesome. Like, see, this is this is why I wanted to ask this question because some people like that have interesting jobs like that. That's I, I can imagine you could probably talk about that for ages, couldn't you? Jeez. I have so many odd stories. 
Like, for example, uh, how one type of group of guys found a way onto a roof of one of the dorms. And, you know, of course, me, the dorks and dumb fools that were, decided to go out there, you know, and you know, check things out. You know, power to them. I can't blame them. Unfortunately, didn't realize that the president to the campus, the college itself, was right across the street. Ah. Uh. He wasn't too happy. Ah. Uh. To say the least. Um, let's see. Regarding kind of your, your work, AJ, uh, J Mac in our live stream chat writes in, I, I wouldn't clean under the bed without a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, I oh mean, Chickadee wonders all the time how I can handle some nasty stuff. Like, I, mm -hmm. I once had to clean out the toilet, I had to like, unplunge a toilet, and it got all kinds of messy. And she was like, How can you do that? It's like, I've done worse. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this is... I just remember how. When they had us clean up the dorms, it felt like such like an inane, insane process. Like it would like everything you expect from anything rational. I mean, for instance, we usually had to clean up right behind the painters and other stuff like that. And the thing is, it came frustrating, like to the point that what if because a group of girls would go through after us and mark walls if anything was dinged up to make sure everything they got painted over, which usually meant we had to go back in and re clean the rooms. Mm -hmm. So I can. I can, I can can count all the times I have had to go in and re uh, move stuff around because part of my job was we had to take all the furniture in the room, which was really heavy, nasty stuff, put it into the center, clean the rugs, put stuff back out, clean the middle, and then set everything up. Yes. Do this floor after floor after floor, and man, it's tough work. Yeah, but uh, so having to go re back and do stuff if. They uh, repainted the walls, or which they actually often did, um, replace the carpets. Like all the t they replaced the carpets all the time. And so whenever they did, we always had to go back and redo that too. But uh, yeah, it was insane. Wow, I'm, I'm listening to you, and I'm like, well, my <laughs> it makes my first job just sound sad. My first job was just writing articles for a company, so I don't. Oh, really... that sounds like so much fun. It, it was fun, but it, there's nothing interesting about it at all because I just wrote articles and got paid for it. So I'm just gonna say that and move on to Chickadee because <laughs> I, oh boy. I don't have any fun stories except hey, my editor I was annoying. Stories about so. my work. Um, <laughs> let me see how I can tell this in the best possible light. Um. Okay, my first job uh, ever was right after I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. Because during high school, my mom had this strict, you must study and not get a job to distract you from studying policy. Uh. Uh, and also, I kind of agreed with it because then I wouldn't be distracted from studying. And I liked actually being able to study and not have to worry about other things. School was my job, which means I graduated with top-notch grades and everything, etc. Fine. But... Afterwards, you know, seeing how much college would cost and trying to be a little more independent and make some money, I said, okay, well, I'm going to try and get a job. I had trouble finding one, and uh, my ex, who was my boyfriend at the time, suggested that I work for a Boy Scout camp uh, that he used to attend, and he must have put in a good word for me or something or whatever, but I got a job there, and I was really excited. I'm like, hey, it's a job. It's great. I have a job. I'm going to make some money. Yay. My mom, of course, was always skeptical, like, oh, no, I don't know if this is going to be a good job. I should have listened to her, um, <laughs> as always, you know. Like, I hate I hate having to say that sometimes, because it's like she's right about almost everything when she is, gets skeptical about things, and it's like, Arr! because then I know that I'm going to be wrong, and she's going to be right. But anyway, um, <laughs> you all know that feel. Or maybe yeah, you do. I don't I know. I do. I do. Yeah, it's like, take Nebit. Why do you have to say that? Because now I know something's going to go wrong. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, so she said, I don't know. It's far away. It's in the middle of the woods. It's at a camp. It's, oh, yeah. Um, this is like, it's a job. I need a job. I need to learn how to work hard. And hey, I get to, as far as I know, I get to teach um, kids how to, you know, make art. Because I thought that I got in the position of, um, uh, assistant uh, counselor for arts and crafts, which is basically like we'd be making things out of wood and constructing stuff and like painting, and it'd be really cool. And I'm like, this is right up my alley. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, okay. Then I got um, a letter from them detailing my, um, the the start dates of the camp and like certain this or that days, etc., and days off that people would be allowed to have or not, etc. Um, I got, I pretty much got one day off every 10 days, mm -hmm. 
And I ended up actually not getting the position of assistant art counselor, but I got the position of head cook. Okay. And keep in mind, I'm like, well, I can kind of cook, I guess. I mean, like, it's like, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, what, what, maybe this won't be so bad. And my mom's like, no, no, stop right now. Tell them you're not coming. And I'm like, what do you, well, you can't just find somebody else. Like now I have to go. And so then, you know, I went. Uh, and it is, in, it's in the middle of the woods in, in a little town called Peach Bottom, um, which is <laughs> like, just like half an hour outside of Maryland. Like it's really like at the edge of Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. It's called Peach Bottom. Okay. And, and it's, um, it was part of a uh, two part camp uh, where, and we had Cub Scouts staying at camp. So there were Boy Scouts at the other camp and there were Cub Scouts at this camp. And um, I, I went there and I got basically no cell phone reception. No internet reception. There's no reception at all. Okay, so it's like you're in the middle of nowhere. And I brought like some books, uh, a couple things. I brought a few snacks for myself. And thankfully, as staff um, and as you know, female staff, I got, got to stay in uh, a cabin with actual beds and everything. I quickly found out there were giant spiders uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was. Uh, great moving in day but basically being head cook was way more than i thought it was going to be it was much more challenging because okay i am actually good news i went to the doctor recently i found out i'm five foot two and not four eleven so hooray uh <laughs> but yeah i'm tiny i am not that tall uh i don't have that much of a reach and although i may be kind of strong i i don't know how strong i am it's difficult for me to lift large amounts of weight at a time so I found this cooking job to be very difficult because there would be times where I would have to lather up a piece of steak of some kind or roast beef that was half my size, okay, and lift it into an oven that was above my head. Oh. And let me tell you, um, DJ Jack, you were always talking about how squeamish I am when it comes to messes. I did not have fun. Because the kitchen is probably the dirtiest place mm -hmm. in camp. Because it's not just, oh, it's a mess, you know, dirty, like dirt or mud or um, grass or whatever outside nature -y mess. So that's fine. I can deal with that. Food messes. Oh, oh, dear. Big problem. Okay? Like, we had to desanitize everything after every meal. And so I was happy about that. But there were times where I had to scrub down a grill or some sort of stoves and scrub by i mean like scrub oh, i don't know uh for an hour or two maybe three hours and the cooks had probably the worst job of the entire camp because we were up hours before everyone else and we were scrubbing down shelves and cleaning everything and preparing for the next meals hours after everyone got off so pretty much i had 12 to 15 hour days every day mm. i would wake up Go to the kitchen, um, work on what was prepped for breakfast, have a couple hours, uh, then work on prep for lunch if it wasn't already done, uh, have a couple hours break, make lunch, um, and then prep for dinner if that wasn't already prepped, because we tried to prep at least two meals in advance, and then have a couple hours break and start making dinner, and then do a massive clean down of everything, and then I went to bed. Like, that was my day pretty much every day for 10 days straight in a row, and then I would get a day off. Um, <laughs> so it was sort of very difficult and very brutal. It was very stressful. Um, also because I was the only female in the kitchen. Because this is a Boy Scout camp, uh -huh. right? So how many girls do you think want to work at a Boy Scout camp, right? <laughs> it's mostly guys that were Boy Scouts themselves or, you know, um, just need some extra money. And so I got made fun of a lot because I was the only girl in the kitchen. Mm. The girls can't cook and like, ah, ha, ha, very funny. Um, so what else can I tell you about that? Um, oh, oh, I can tell you about the, the time when I was forced to clean under the stove. Oh no, that sounds terrifying. Did, was, did you find dead things? Oh my God. It, yeah, what? I found dead things. It was the most disgusting experience of my life because it took an hour and... And the floors were, were always extremely greasy. So having to, like, scrub that down every day and then, like, use steel wool to scrub certain parts of things down. I had gashes on my fingers by the end of this sort of thing because they didn't have gloves, okay? <laughs> so you're scrubbing with steel wool for two hours. Gashes, 
Oil, Ow. dirt, Ow. fingers were a mess. Pony Vegeta absolute... writes in, did you find zombie Narnia under the stove? Ugh. I wish I did. <laughs> so <laughs> what I did wish. you find? We're, we're all at the edge of our seats. Come on. All kinds of, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, sort of like a black, oily, mucky, yet grainy buildup, I guess, mm. of things that have been swept under there over time that were decaying. You know, because when you, like, mop the floors, it's really hard to mop under the stove. Uh -huh. Then you, like, need to move the stove every now and then to clean under the stove, and you find all that residue that people, like, shove under there or gets under there. It's really gross. <laughs> it's really gross. Uh, so Vegeta, that was... Vegeta writes in again, the legendary cockroach graveyard. Cockroach graveyard, yeah. I think there was a bug under there, a big, big old dead bug, too, oh. which is always lovely because the bugs are huge. We're in the middle of the woods, right? We're in the middle of the woods in a valley in the mountains. The bugs are huge. Oh. Giant spiders. Uh, I tried. I think we set one of them on fire for fun, which was probably the highlight. <laughs> of <fire>. Sorry, <laughs> it wasn't my idea. It was not my idea. Wait, um, I have a question. So, um, yes. you, because I stayed at a Boy Scout camp once, because uh, I, I went to a, a, vo a volunteer retreat thing with one of my organizations in college, and uh, mm -hmm. we stayed at a Boy Scout camp, and I assume it was similar to the one you stayed at. Did you have like the little it, where you where you slept? Were they like kind of like bunk beds? Yep. Were there spiders yeah. living in the bunk beds? Because um, where because where I went, the bunk beds they were like they were just wooden frames with like really small mattresses. So like the top, like if you were in the bottom bunk, if you looked up in the corners of the wooden bunks, there were like nests of spiders in every single bunk. So we Thanks. arrive and we're just like, okay. yeah, okay, we're gonna have fun. Oh my god! And so that was. A thing. I'm just wondering if you had to go through that horror as well. No, no, no. Thankfully, <sighs> thankfully, there were no spiders actually living okay, in the, good for you. In the bitsy, bitsy there spider went up Shut the up, water spider. No! You don't understand. I woke up with a spider on my face one of the nights, and I was just like, oh, God. And he was like, hi, bunk buddy. No, You're seriously. Like, oh my God. And like, I actually, I screamed and rolled out of the bed and woke up everybody in the in the cabin. They're like, what the fuck? I'm like, there was a spider. And they're like, okay, it's okay. That happened to me yesterday. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, I, know. I mean, we we did. It was good because we were there to do volunteer work. We did great things, but those spiders, though, those spiders. Oh. <sighs> yeah. uh, the spiders, AJ. Sorry. The spiders everywhere. No, yeah, we oh, had um, a giant wolf spider. What's a wolf spider? That was, it's like the biggest spider I ever. I think this requires you finding the picture. Please, well, okay. Uh, please find a picture. Are you sure? I don't know. Yep. I'm scared now. Sure. The viewers probably want to know. Okay. Oh, God! There it is! <laughs> uh, while you're finding that, Veggie writes in, I can envision Chickadee battling a giant bug to the death to protect campers. <laughs> With a frying pan in one hand and a spatula in the other. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Uh, let me... I don't even, and I haven't even gotten started on the actual kitchen work itself besides the cleaning stuff cleaning stuff was pretty bad um but there was you know also cooking things um but here let me hear you post okay um trigger warning for anybody who's scared of spiders this is the tamest picture i found um i should probably try and find something that's like i don't know scales it for you it's okay you can just give us an idea Yeah, that would about do it. Okay. Um, I posted it in the live stream. Oh, no thank you. Yeah, there, there's the wolf spider. You put it in the Skype box too? I, I will, just a second. I have to copy the first one. First one again, because I posted the second one too. Um, jumping spiders? I'm not sure if we have jumping spiders, actually. Uh, I don't know if we had them. Um, in camp, I didn't hear about those. I just heard about the legendary wolf spider. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They were very fast. It was very fast. Um, and I, I think we did manage to set it on fire. We got one, one in one's hand. Yeah. I, I, that, I know, that's how big it is. It's, uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Itsy bitsy spider. Caught it's up not itsy bitsy! <laughs> Not itsy bitsy at all. The itsy biggie spider. Itsy biggie. No. Oh. Yeah, but anyway, we had fun setting that one on fire. It wasn't my idea, though. 
But then someone chastises about how we could have set the whole building on fire because the way we set the spider on fire. I'm like, oh yeah, that's true. It but was worth it. Like, but after working 15 hour days with very little sleep, eating completely awful food, and being stressed to the nines, you stop caring about setting buildings on fire. <laughs> You know, that's when I start to picture those, like, memes you see all the time of, like, someone, like, a house on fire and oh, yeah. a block on fire and someone, like, a tagline saying, it's okay, we got, we got it, it's good. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. I, oh, God, well, on that lovely note, Tiki, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to more, like, details of both you and AJ's jobs um, in a bit. I do want to hear about uh, Fan's first job, though, because I'm sure he has some interesting stories. If anything, he'll tell them fascinatingly because he's so tired. Fanny, you've been quiet. Uh, and, um, yeah, <laughs> I've been quiet because, uh, no, I didn't fall asleep, but I have been, for some reason, like, zoning out. Oh, okay. Uh, I wonder whose fault that is. Ow! <laughs> um, I enjoyed that. Actually, I'm still in my first job, like, my okay. first actual, um, job. Um... And as most people know that I, I work for Target. I've said on air quite a Target. few times already. Sorry. Yeah, That's however so you want to say it. Um, <laughs> Who says Target? No one. My friends just say it to piss people off. And oh, it okay. works. It usually works. Okay. That's brilliant. And no, Egghead, I did not fall asleep. I have simply been zoning in and out. That's what it's like. That's what it's been like all day long. Meditating. <sighs> but anyways, yeah, no, um, and I, I hate having to explain this to people, but I always have to, and people are like, so you work for an American company, and I'm like, no, Target Canada is its own entity, it's its own, um, corporation, we just happen to fall under the umbrella of Target. Wait, people give you a hard time for working at Target? I've had that before, yes. Oh. Huh. Because they're like, why are you working for an American company that took over, like, the best Canadian company ever? And I'm like... It, it... Because I need money. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where you punch them, right? That's a pretty good reason. Yeah, really. But no, no, but no, no. no. Um, I, I've been working with... I got my interview end of August. Nearing the end of August. And they hired me within a week of my interview because they just loved me that much. And uh, I, my, my orientation was on September 3rd. I officially started doing work on the 18th of September. We got the keys to the warehouse, which is basically all stores are. They're big warehouses with <clears throat> stuff in them. Um... So yeah, we got the keys to the place on the seventeenth. Um, so we set we we literally had spent two and a half months building the whole store. So now, what, during the first couple weeks, every single day at a certain time, the human resources staff would play a song over the PA and would encourage that everybody dances along to it. Guess who did that? You. Yep. Yeah. We, yep, we had the cha-cha slide going, we had time warp, we had we had footloose, we had so many cool songs. I was uh I was rather happy. It was it was a lot of fun and I've been able to meet a lot of really cool people. But I'll tell you what's actually uh, really funny was during orientation, I actually tried to keep quiet, which is not easy for me. That's right. I mean, <laughs> so nearing the end of the orientation, I'm like, OK, these people need to know who they're going to be working with. So I just let it all go. Isn't that against regulations? <laughs> what Sorry, it's a bad joke. Sorry, I just I'm tired a bit too when you say that let it all go. Like you just like zip <laughs> don't go to the pants. <laughs> no. Uh -oh. I have some class. 
Some being the key word here. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it was too easy. I'm sorry, fan. You know I love Jump you. Down to my I left. knew that somebody was going to say it. Why do you think I said it? Well, you're talking to the girl who always makes that's what she said jokes about everything. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and this is the same girl who says your face after every statement anyone makes. So, <laughs> I am not mature by any means when I'm with my friends. Uh, me neither. Uh, but no, and um, it, I've had so many funny moments with people. Uh, let's see, there was one moment I started singing New York, New York by some Frank, by, by Frankie Sinatra, and a bunch of us joined in. We did the Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> some of us even did the Wizard of Oz, like, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and a whole ton of us sang it together, and we skipped down the store together, and it was so pretty. Pretty. How proud <laughs> <laughs> oh, Well, it's good to hear, though, that you're enjoying your first job because obviously some people like Chickadee have terrifying experiences. Some people have interesting yet strange experiences like AJ. It's good to hear that some people actually have nice first jobs. Or, yeah, and, and some have boring jobs like here. me. Yeah, it, mine was it just, is, mine's just boring. I it, wrote it articles. Is, <laughs> it is nice because Target is a wonderful company to work for. It doesn't matter if you're under the American corporation or the Canadian. It's just such an amazing company to work for because they're so open about everything. Mm -hmm. Like they're not, they're not afraid. Like they're not like other big brand stores where they'll hide behind a scandal or something. They'll actually be straight up honest about it. And um, the one of the, my major, major, major loves about Target is the fact that everybody is just so cool with everything. I could walk in one day. Actually, no, I did do this. I walked into work one day with reindeer antlers on my head um, for, you know, Christmas holidays. And people looked at me, and they're like, that right. is pretty awesome. <laughs> and at this point, at this point, now that I've been working with them for three months, three plus months now, they're like, eh, we're used to it now. <gasps> Which shocks me, because most people take years and years and years to get used to the way that I act. It's probably like that... they have to see you, though, like... Not every day, but several times a week for like eight hours a day, plus more maybe. So that's probably it's overexposure <laughs> to the fan. Yep, <laughs> yeah, they they they've gotten used to it, uh, and, I, and um, even my supervisors they're pretty cool with me. Everybody's cool with me. Mm -hmm. Jeez, which could either be a good or bad thing if they're that used to it. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that about that about wraps up our initial talk about um about our first jobs. And like Chicky said, we have a really good spread here. We have the boring first job, like mine. We have the, the terrible first job with Chicky. We have the good first job with Fan, and we have the interesting but slightly weird first job with AJ, <laughs> which is good and, and it's it's quite fitting. Really. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to add on to AJ's mm -hmm. story about all the janitors. Right. Um. At my school, I had a similar relationship with uh, the janitors at my school. And I found that they had very good conversations as well. Hmm. I just think that all janitors are just naturally philosophical. I know, yeah. Actually, I had a janitor at my elementary school. And his name was Tom. And we talked to him about... I talked to him about everything. I don't know why. But I, whenever I saw him, I was like, hi, and I'd give him a hug. And I was like a little eight-year-old girl. And maybe it was probably a little weird for him because I was so young. But I mean, like, he was really nice, though. And, like, he gave me really good advice that I still follow to this day. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. It's... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know why. It's, just, it's like Well, it's because it's just people, I think, sometimes give janitors and custodians a bad rap. And if you ever meet, like, my Uncle Bob, who is also a custodian, who may at times seem like the most goofiest, biggest bigots you've ever met is by far one of the most friendliest jolliest man you ever met in your life and it's unfortunate that at the school he works at he's been told not to really uh talk with them or hang out with them that much anymore even or even give him candy to uh help him clean up the place mm -hmm. which they gladly did because they all like bob mm -hmm. so it's, it's a sad thing he's not have that reputation anymore because i don't know i remember actually a lot of early books used to read 
in school were about how, you know, you could just get to know the janitor because they're awesome. Yeah. Unless they're Freddy Krueger, then watch out. <laughs> uh, and then I even had a lot of relationships like that with, like, my, with a lot of teachers that same. I went to high school with. I mean, like, I have some of my teachers on Facebook. Mm -hmm, same. I mean, like, I, like, they're just so, it's cool when you can have a personal connection with someone that you spend pretty much almost every day with. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.